Thank you everyone for joining us on Women's Health Weekly, our, our skin issue with Dr. Jamie Glick, and who's a dermatologist, and Dr. O Nicole Ostroff, who's a gynecologist. Let's just set the scenario that I'm a 24-year-old woman and I have perfect skin. What can I do um, to prevent potential acne outbreaks and how and how, how would I am I at risk for suddenly getting acne? What's the what are the answers to some of that? I would say, you know, if you're not prone to acne, the fastest way to get you prone to acne is to use comedogenic products. So that means products that are going to clog your pores. So a lot of times I see my younger patients wanting to use a lot of anti-aging products, even though they're only, you know, 24. And I understand and really respect the, you know, preventative measures. But sometimes they're then using products that are designed for older patients, you know, potentially their mother's moisturizer or serum that doesn't really factor in that younger people may be prone to acne. And then they end up putting on these very thick, heavy products, and then suddenly developing clogged pores and acne. So like we talked about before, there are four plus things that cause acne and hyperkeratinization or clogged pores is one of the primary ones. Um, in terms of keeping your skin young, the number one thing is sunscreen, even if you're indoors. Um, I I'm wearing my sunscreen right now. I hope you um, are as well. So especially if you're near a window, UVA light, actually is light that can come in through even a closed window and that actually can damage collagen and cause aging. So broad spectrum sunscreens that prevent against UVA and UVB light um, are really important, even when you're sitting in your home, like most of us are doing these days. Dr. Ostroff, did you know that? I didn't. I had no idea. I mean, I, I always do wear sunscreen, uh, you know, as, as I get a little bit older, um, I'm a little bit more aware of my skin and take better care of it than I did in my 20s. Um, but I had no idea. But I think, you know, I think a lot of women now do are a little bit more cognizant about using the moisturizers with sunscreen, using the foundations with sunscreens. But I had no idea, even when you're driving, I guess, too, then, right? Totally, especially on your hands because a lot of times people put sunscreen on their face and they forget about their hands and if you have that wheel then your hands can age you a lot oftentimes we can say we can tell the age of a woman by her neck chest and hands not even her face because people tend to apply more moisturizers and sunscreen to the face going back to 24 year old ken um <laughs> i also think a retinoid using a retinoid as long as you're not actively trying to become pregnant or currently pregnant is a great way to kill two birds. One is um, preventing acne because retinoids can decrease the size of the sebaceous gland or oil glands and they can also unclog pores. And they're also um, one of the only topical medicines to promote collagen growth. So that is an excellent way to do multiple things. And it's they're even at over the counter retinoids and retinols now. Are there some really great products that you think about when you think about a great over-the-counter product with retinoids in them? So I think that there are a million of them. <laughs> Probably, um, right. I think that, um, you know, Differin or Adapalene is the first ever prescription strength retinoid that's available over-the-counter. So a lot of times because insurance can often give us a difficult time in retinoids. A lot of times, I'll, if I can't get a tretinoin or a Tazerac, which are higher strength retinoids applied for my patients or covered by their insurance, I'll just recommend they start over-the-counter Differin or Dapling because they can get that. It's a little confusing though, because Differin now has like a whole brand of products. They have sunscreens and moisturizers. And so a lot of times when I say Differin, I'll get an email from my patient and I'll have like nine different photos of different products, but Adapalene gel is the generic name of, of what you'd be looking for in that case. Are there any foods or nutritional aspects uh, to one's lifestyle that may either worsen acne, bring on acne, or even help prevent acne? We all have individual things that can stress out our skin, increase inflammation to our skin, and thus, you know, increase bacteria growth and make acne. Um, but just generally speaking in the studies, typically skim milk has been associated with higher levels of acne and so have high glycemic foods. So foods that can spike your blood sugar 
and insulin-like growth factor that can then exacerbate the growth of your sebaceous glands can all cause acne. So, you know, the things that make you healthy are the things that make your skin healthy too. I have one more acne topic for you. Um, and I know you wanted to talk about this and it's very timely and it's important because all of us are now wearing masks. Um, and those masks can be irritating and they produce moisture in the, in, uh, beneath the mask. What, what are your recommendations? Can, can, can that lead to more acne? Can, what are there other skin problems the masks can lead to? And if so, how do we prevent that? Make sure that if you're using a reusable cloth mask, you're washing it as frequently as you can. Um, I also think a choice of a wash might be good. So using a face wash with a salicylic acid so salicylic acids are keratolytic, so they basically can unclog your pores. So if you're using a mask every day that's clogging your pores, at least when you're washing your face, you can unclog your pores. So what I would do is use a sal acid wash like in the morning or at night. And then the other time of day, I would probably use a foaming cleanser. I don't always recommend foaming cleansers because they can often strip the skin barrier, but because you have a lot of extra moisture and stuff going on, you want to be extra cleansed. So I think a foaming cleanser is a good idea. And there's a lot of over-the-counter sal acid. I have no stock in Neutrogena, but they make a ton of different sal acids. But I don't want any of the ones with the beads. Um, those can actually inflame skin, and especially if your skin's already inflamed. So just a gentle sal acid wash and a gentle foaming cleanser too. Uh, once again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we come to you every week with uh, women's health uh, ad advice and information that comes from the experts uh, here in New York City and all around the world. <music>